Welcome to Tech Talks Lecture 121, Designing with a LM7808 1-Amp Regulator. LM7808 DC power supply converts a high voltage AC source into a stable regulated 8 volts DC output. It is ideal for hobbyist projects and embedded systems like the Arduino and other microcontrollers that require a constant system 8 volt DC supply. The design uses a transformer, a rectifier, a smoothing capacitor, references of all capacitance, a LM7808 with smoothing output capacitances. Selection of the ACN VN must be set to 2 volts higher than 8 volt DC regulated output thus aids in the selection of the step-down transformer that will be chosen. Usually a transformer that steps down 120 volts AC to 25 volts AC will work, but you could go as low as 10.5 volts AC. Here uh, we're going over the electrical characterization of the Micro A 7800 series positive voltage regulators. These regulators are industrial standard and they are like the LM7508 family series or 75 LM7500 series. There are three terminal devices. Each device has an output current up to 1.5 amp, internal thermal overload protection, high power dissipation capability, internal short circuit current limiting, that is if the the output gets shorted to ground, it'll shut down. Output transistor safe area compensation. As you can see, it's a TO220 package where the uh, pin one, looking down on the device, is input, pin two is common, and pin three is the output. They have a, an associated family of voltage integrated voltage regulators for a wide range of applications. I have 5 volts to 24 volts, made by Texas Instruments. Here is the uh, silicon schematic of the, inside the chip. We won't be going over that. Now we have some thermal data with relation to the package, the TO220 package. This is the one we're interested in, the 19 degrees Celsius per watt. And that will help us determine if we need a heat sink or not. You can use Celsius or centigrade. Centigrade is an older term, and today most people use Celsius. Here is our uh, positive voltage regulation testing uh, parameters. And these are the parameters used to test the operation of this device, to do a characterization of the device. And we'll just touch on a couple of them. Uh, the output voltage from 7 volts to 20 volts will t uh, range from 4.8 volts, typical 5 volts, to a high of 5.2 volts. And that would be at 20 volts at 25 degrees centigrade. The input regulation needs to be 7 volts. Remember, 2 volts above the output to 25 volts or 8 volts to 12 volts at 25 degrees centigrade and this will be the, the amount of the voltage and how much it will vary in millivolts per that as a ripple rejection you know to help you with your filtering cap and the output regulations as the current changes from 5 milliamps to 1.5 amps at 25 degrees centigrade that's how much the voltage will vary as the current changes has an output resistance of 17 ohms, 0. Point, sorry, 017 ohms, not 17 ohms. But as you can see, these are important parameters for your design as you're using it to build a power supply for whatever project you have. That's it for the characterization. Here is your electrical characteristics of the Micro A 7808C. As you can see, our output voltage will be vary from 7.7 .7 or 7.6 to 8.3 or 8.4, depending on what voltage in you have. You can have a voltage in 
of 10.5 volts to 23 volts. <clears throat> Input voltage regulation will, uh, will be from 10.5 to 25 volts AC coming in at 25 degrees Celsius and will only vary from 6 to 6, 160 millivolts out. Now this voltage in is regulated, so it's been rectified and filtered. Ripple rejection is 120 hertz. Output voltage regulation from 5 amp load to 1.5 amp load at 25 Celsius, and that is 5 milliamp load to 1.5 amp load, excuse me, at 25 degrees Celsius. will only vary from uh, 4 millivolts up to 160 millivolts, depending on what the current load is. Output resistance at 1 kilohertz is 0 0.016 ohms. And a temperature coefficient from 0 degrees Celsius to 125 degrees Celsius is a negative 0 0.8 millivolts per degree Celsius. The rest of this is, it could be used in uh, some part of your design, there, but are not uh, uh, pertinent today. In our schematic of a power supply, the first part is a transformer, has a primary and a secondary. It steps down the voltage from 120 volts peak to peak to 12.5 volts peak, which is actually, which is 25 volts peak to peak. That makes it have a turns ratio of 4.8 to 1. And that's all, I mean, that's a practically all it does. This it steps down a voltage to something we can manage and handle. The next section of the power supply is the full wave rectifier and as you can see it takes the peak to peak in volt, uh, input AC voltage and forward biases on the positive diodes like one in three and causes a positive peak to come out then on the negative uh, pulse of the peak it forward biases uh, uh, one in three two and four and so this being diode one, diode three, diode two, and diode four. And as you can see, it creates this ripple of output, consistent peak voltages. So these are all 12.5 volts. That's why it's 25 volts, volts peak to peak. But these, these are 12.5 volt peak voltages. And it continues to do this over and over again. And that's it for the full wave bridge rectifier. The third part of the power supply is the bulk capacitance. It appears right after the full wave rectifier, or bridge rectifier. As you can see here, this blue, light blue line is your positive peak of the sinusoidal end. And it is half of the voltage that the sinusoidal peak to peak voltage was. Here's the negative side of that sinusoidal voltage, and again the positive side, and it just continues to go. As that, fil as that filters through the capacitor, charging and discharging, the time constant of the charge rate of the capacitor is much larger than this bandwidth or this wavelength of the 120 hertz ripple. It's 120 hertz ripple because it's 60 cycles in, and it's times two, making 120. So you, you have the small ripple of 120 hertz. As we can remember looking at the care, electrical characteristics, it had a 120 hertz ripple rejection. This would feed and also into the, this would actually be a, an electrolytic capacitor, 470 microfarads, and it feeds into a one, uh, 0 0.1 microfarad ceramic cap. The ceramic cap is for spurious uh, spikes coming down the line and it that shorts all that to ground. This will feed right into the LM7800 family or the micro A7800 family voltage regulator. It will regulate it and, and uh, output a nice smooth 8 volt DC out. Okay, now we're going to do our calculating power dissipation, PD. Using the power formula, PD equals voltage times current. 
So we our voltage is V in minus V out. V in is 12 volts. V out is 8 volts times the max current out is 1.5 amp. That comes to be 6 watts. We need to know theta JA. That's the junction temperature of the case that we have. We are in a TO220. So we go our, to our thermal characterization. This is our electronic characterization sheet. And this tells us we're in the 220 package. We have the 7800 family. And this right here, 220 package, theta JA is 19 degrees Celsius per watt. Very good. So we bring that over to here. We take the 19 degrees Celsius per watt, multiply it by 6 watts. The watts cancel out. This watt cancels this watt out, leaving degrees Celsius. That's the, the units we want. That comes to an operating temperature of degrees Celsius, 114 degrees Celsius. So do we need a heat sink? Well, if this was the maximum temperature we would ever reach, we'd say no, because 125 is where you reach thermal shutdown, and we are not exceeding that. But we must add the room temperature. A common value for that is 40 degrees Celsius. So 114 degrees Celsius plus 40 degrees Celsius comes to be 154 degrees Celsius, which exceeds our thermal shutdown upper limit. So yes, we need a heat sink. Okay, that's it. Then right after the 7800A regulator, you have another filtering, which is C3, C4, as you see here. They're just for additional filtering and to route any spurious signaling coming down. That, that's the end of this lecture. We, uh, there's a couple things to remember I'd like to point out. To minimize heat and improve efficiency, use the lowest possible input voltage that still meets the minimum requirement, typically 7 volts. That's 2 volts above 5 volts. The uh, uh, electrical characteristic sheet said it was 7 volts. I said 9. That was my mistake. Low current, the LM7805, can typically supply up to 1 amp of output current but this uh, requires a sufficient heat sink. Without one, the thermal protection will shut down the chip. If you go much above 1.5 amps, if you go above 1.5 amps, the thermal protection is going to kick in. So you need a heat sink. Component placement is important. Place the input and output capacitors as close as possible to the LM7805 pins to maximize their efficiency. Also, safety. The LM7805 has a built-in thermal and short circuit protection. The whole family does, making it robust against overloads. Okay, that's the end of that lecture. I hope you enjoyed it.